Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Lorenzo. Hi, I'm Marina. And this is our presentation on plastic paper and biodegradable bags, which is better. Ever since the discovery of plastics, there's been an increase in the demand for this material due to its cheap, versatile, and easy to manufacture process. Plastics have become so convenient for us that they're found everywhere, whether it be in toys, bags, cars, electronics, or even in machines. Plastic bags are some of the most convenient ways for us to transport a lot of grocery goodies in such a small amount of time. And what happens once we're done using them? Well, we just throw them away. But this has become a major problem. The reason is because it adds to pollution. Plastics are made of materials that are found in nature, such as gas, oil, coal, minerals, and even plants. But the way that the atoms and molecules are arranged are very important. Plastics are simply chains of similar molecules linked together. These chains are called polymers. That is why some plastics begin with poly. However, these same polymers are hard for organisms to break down. So once they are thrown away, they become trash that's very hard to get rid of. So what can we do to help combat this pollution while also still keeping that convenient lifestyle? Well, some think that the answer is to introduce alternatives to plastic, such as paper and biodegradable bags, to see which one can successfully replace and help minimize the amount of pollution in landfills and even the ocean. But how do we know which one is more sustainable? Well, we use something called a life cycle assessment, or LCA for short. With this LCA, we were able to track and measure how sustainable each material is throughout its lifetime. We base our research around the three pillars of sustainability, which are environmental, social, and economic. Using these pillars, we can look at many attributes or indicators about a type of bag and give each bag a final index value between zero and 100. These numbers are very important as they tell us how well the materials did compared to each other. In our case, we made zero be the best in terms of how sustainable it is, while 100 is the least sustainable. We even made a final index summing up all three pillars to find out once and for all which was the most sustainable. So looking at the results, we can see that in the environmental pillar, plastic bags surprisingly had the lowest no number, which if you remember, corresponds to the most sustainable option. Now, why is that? If we dive deeper, we can see that while plastic bags took the longest to decompose, they use and produce the least amount of harmful materials. Plastic bags have the lowest CO2 emissions, water usage, and solid waste production. Moving on to the social pillar, we can see that paper is actually the most sustainable in this category and plastic is the least sustainable. This is because paper bags are very safe to produce and use. Basically, you don't have to feel bad about using paper, which makes it a good social commitment. Finally, the last and most important pillar of sustainability is the economic pillar. For this pillar, we see that yet again, plastic is the most sustainable option. It performed the best due to the, its ease of use, cheap price, and the fact that it's sourced right here in the US. So now that we've seen all these results, what does it all mean? Who is the winner here? Well, adding up all the numbers and checking to see which one was the lowest, we see that plastic is in fact the most sustainable. It looks like the other materials still have a long way to go before they could successfully replace plastic. Although plastic may take the longest to decompose, there are still a lot of factors that come into play when considering an alternative for single-use bags. If anyone wants to help further improve this LCA, there could be some improvements. One of them could be to create a consumer-friendly survey asking about the different bags to see which one they prefer and why. This would help out a lot about <clears throat> valuable information as well as things on the consumer side. In addition, being able to talk to the manufacturers themselves would provide a lot of insight on how things work as well as providing good, credible data. Not to mention being able to analyze more scenarios as it could even change the outcome of our results. Overall, we thank you for watching and we hope you learned a lot to become a better, more well-aware consumer.